Well, good evening, y'all. It's Mary from Stamps and Lingers, and it's 8 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, let me refresh my screen just to be sure I am going live. And make sure I'm on Mutify, because mute is what needs to happen. And hopefully y'all can hear me, and we'll start making comments as you arrive. So, my plan for tonight is kind of twofold. The first is... Um, we're going to go through how to make this card that I posted just a, a picture of the outside of this morning. This uses the new Eastern Palace bundle. And you can see it just says hello on the front and on the inside a nice sentiment says to think of you is to smile. Now if you guys know me at all, you know that leaving this much blank space was really, really hard for me to do because uh, I, well, I hemmed and I hawed and I considered putting some of these little stamps there and maybe a little dewy doo here and there and I just finally decided, no, leave it blank. You can do it, Mary. You can do it. Hey, Karen from New Jersey and Paula and Jean. So glad you could join me tonight. Um, as I was saying, we're going to work on this card as we move through, but what I also want to show you is the two bundles that are available starting tomorrow from the Eastern Palace Suite. Um, this is kind of unusual. I've been doing this for a couple of three years now and I have never seen them release a suite before the catalog goes live. So this is kind of cool and kind of fun. And on top of the fact that they released it early, they also made them into two really cool bundles. Um, now, the products themselves will still be available in June when the catalog goes live. But once this one month pre-order early release, however you want to call it, ends, the bundles themselves are going to go away. So these are a pretty good deal. Um, and if you like this suite at all, and I'm going to show you why you should here in about two seconds, if you like this suite at all, this is the time to do it. Also, I will be having a week-long ordering special for the release of the Eastern Palace, and I'll get to that in just a little bit. Hey, Jerry, how are you, babe? Nice to see you. Hey, Karen, I'm glad you could join me. Uh, we're going to get started. What I'd first like to do is just talk about the two bundles. Um, so I'm going to set my card aside. So there's two bundles. The first is the starter bundle, and this is very basic. It's a good bundle. There is absolutely no doubt about it. In that bundle, you get the Eastern Beauty stamp set itself. You can see it has a lot of uh, sentiments and some basic graphic images that you can use to put together in all sorts of ways and you'll see a couple of things that I've done. What I really love about it is that the font is beautiful on all of the sentiments and I kind of love these little curved sentiments right here and the fun thing about them is you can use them curved as you like and they go very nicely with all the die cuts and the other stamps but you can also gently straighten them out when you put them on your block and so you can make these straight if you like. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that is something that you get in the pre in the starter bundle. You also get the pack of designer series paper. And that's true in this in both of them obviously. Obviously you get the stamp set in both of them. The premier paper the the Eastern Palace specialty paper is really, really pretty. Um, I know that people have mixed feelings out there about, uh, hey, St Steve Robbie Miller, I am probably say, calling you completely wrong, and I'm sorry about that, but that's how your name comes up on Facebook. So if I'm borking that, please let me know. Um, anyway, there are um, 10 designs that are two-sided in this paper. You can see here, I've laid them all out. I, I hope you can see them mostly. Slide that forward so you can see that they're two sided. Um, and the colors in this set, I, they're just great. The uh, dapper denim is, is throughout the package, and then Tranquil Tide, my new personal favorite color in the new in colors, and Fresh Fig, and of course Lemon Lime Twist. And like I was saying, uh, lemon lime twist it's either a love it or a hate it and I started out by hating it and within about a day I loved it so I think it's kind of fun um, so you get these ten patterns that are two-sided or ten pieces of mm -mm, ten designs then you get also a pack of gold foil embossed paper 
And then the other gold embossed paper is this uh, with the lines in the dapper denim. So this is a real nice set of paper, and that comes in both bundles. I'll set that aside for a second. Um, you also get a couple of embellishments. You get these vinyl stickers. Now these are another thing that when I first saw them, I wasn't really sure. It's Robbie Miller. Okay, hi Robbie, thank you. I was thinking that was maybe it, but I didn't wanna, you know, well, sound goofier than I already had. Uh, but these are kind of fun. These are vinyl, as the name implies, and they're pretty heavy, but look how cool they are when you use them. You see, you can, in fact, tell that that's a sticker, but it lays down very nicely, and it's so heavy and clear that it's, uh, it's a real easy little way to put on some embellishment right off the bat. And what's fun about them is in these you can see there's three circles there you can or two circles you get that you can use just this outside or you can use just the inside or you can use them all together as an embellishment so these are fun you get a pack of these in both of the bundles lemon lime twist i know right jerry it's just it's just a fun color I, i'm really liking it and i'm surprised by that because it's way way out of my wheelhouse uh, and finally, in the starter kit, you get a Lemon Lime Twist ink pad, a Tranquil Tide ink pad, and a Fresh Fig imp, uh, ink pad. And, as a free gift with this, you get, uh, and this is in the bundle, you get a pack of our new Very Vanilla note cards and envelopes. So there's 20 note cards and 20 envelopes that go with, and you get that free when you purchase the starter bundle for the Eastern Palace. All right, now let's talk about the really good deal here. The really good deal is the Premier package. And in that one, you get the stamp set, you get the designer series paper, you also get a pack of the Eastern Palace uh, cardstock bundle, cardstock pack, which has Tranquil Tide, Dapper Denim, and Fresh Fig, 11, eight and a half by 11 cardstock. You get the vinyl stickers, and you get a pack of the new mini tassels. Those are gold and fresh fig and tranquil tide, and those add kind of a fun easterny flair to a card. And then, of course, you get the three ink pads, and oh, most important of all, you get the matching thinlets. And we're fixing to talk about why you want these thinlets. Um, so, so what you're really getting is you're getting the stamp set and the thinlets, plus the inks, the cardstock, the tassels, the vinyls, and uh, you get two free gifts. Not only do you get the very vanilla ink pad, or <laughs> now we do not have a very vanilla ink pad, Mary, don't be goofy. The very vanilla note cards and envelopes, but you also get a pack of wah, thick, very vanilla cardstock. And so that is kind of nice because these make, these do make um, lovely card bases. I know I've said in the past that I don't use it because I like to layer up my cards. Hey Valerie, nice to have you down from Canada. Hopefully it's uh, not freezing cold there. Um, I know I've said I don't really use the thick cardstock because I like to add layers, but I've been, I've been trying to train myself and I'm I'm really kind of loving it. It's beautiful, thick cardstock, um, very usable, very nice to have around. So, so those are the things that you get in the Premier package. Now, let's talk about these thinlets, shall we, before we get to the card. So the, these are like the coolest things ever. The only thing that was ever more fun to me, and it was just because I really liked it, and I'm, I'm still bitter and pouting a little bit, maybe even sulking, because they took special reason and stylish stems away. But these thinlets you can put together in so many combinations that it's just crazy. Let me just show you a few that I, that I cut out for you. Here is, I have handily labeled them with alphabets. This is the initial die, set, die that I used, and if you just cut with that, then this is the look that you get. Oh, by the way, just so you know, the largest die in the circles layering framelits cuts that out, as does the largest scallop die with a little more 
border. So you can get your inside, you can get your die cut all pretty and beautiful and then cut it right out. So when I made this card using um, several different dies, I could have, instead of leaving it on a square panel, I could have cut that out and put, put a circle on my card. So that gives you a little additional flexibility there. So if you take this die and add this die to the middle like that, and all you do is just lay them down on your cardstock. They nest up just like that. How easy is that? Am I in the... Yes, I am. Okay. You just run them through all nested up. So if you add this die to the, the first one, then you get a design that looks like that. When you add the third center, you get a design that looks like that. But wait, there's more. We have a second center, and when you add it in the middle, it just changes how the inside of the die cut looks. Can you see the difference there? It's not huge. It's not a huge difference, but it, it's pretty, and it gives you a lot of flexibility. Okay. Maybe you want to use the other middle die which I have handily labeled E. So if you cut those two out, then you get a, a design that looks like this. And of course, you can add either of the centers into the middle, and then you get die cuts that look like this. All right. Now, there's also another set of dies that starts with this. And what's kind of fun about a lot of these that we're fixing to talk about is these edges don't cut. They, well, they cut, but this center, this center circle doesn't cut. It creases. So when you use just this die on your cardstock, what you get is this design with a crease. So you can just raise these little points and add a little depth and dimension and fun to your card. But maybe you want a little more. So add one of these middle small dies, the center dies to it, and now you have a little more design yet. But there's also some other options. What if you used this outside and instead of using Come here, Jay. Instead of using this die, you used this little doha right here and cut him out. Again, this is one that cuts the points but creases. Hey, Julie. How are you? I hope you had a safe trip. It cuts the points out, but it leaves the center creased, so you can just raise those like that. And you're fixing to see that again on the card that we've made, for, made tonight. You also get these two... Um, cutouts that take out the entire design. So you can cut out this like so and what you end up with is a little embellishment like this. So all that was was this die and this die. You run them through at the same time. Just line them up with equal edges, which is a whole lot easier without these little pieces of tape. Those are extra and they do not come with the set. I'm sorry. You'll have to add your own if you want it. Okay. So that this little combination makes this little embellishment. And this little combination right here, I feel like I'm doing the piggies and this little piggy ran all the way home. So if you use these two dies, again this is an outside cut and this one is one where it um, cuts portions of it and leaves portions creased. So you end up with this. And you are going to see this little design in tonight's card. So I stopped there. That's like 15 different things that you can do. And I'm pretty sure there's a bunch more. I uh, just got kind of tired of cutting out stuff. So um, oh, I was going to show you. These are the two these are how those two dies look if you just cut them out. So you can make little windows or all sorts of things that you'd like. Lots and lots of possibilities here. And that's kind of why you want this set, folks, is the, is the massive potential for it 
um, for making all sorts of designs and, and pretty creative thingies. That is a technical term. Now, let me tell you real briefly about my ordering special, and then we'll make the cards. How about that? Y'all going, shut up, Mary, just shut up. I really don't want to keep hearing you yak. Just show us the card. Okay, so here's the ordering special, y'all. Now, for people who, starting tomorrow when the, when the order period opens through the 8th of May, so that's one week, People who order the Premier package, if you order the Premier Eastern Palace bundle, you're going to get double peppermint re rewards points. So if you do the math, that's eight peppermints. When you get to 16 peppermints, you get a $40 gift of your choice that I will ship to you for free. Um, so that's kind of a quick way to get some free stuff, and you're also getting that bundle. I'm also going to throw in a pack of embellishments from the 2017 to 2018 catalog. It's my choice, so it'll be a surprise. And those are in addition, of course, to the $10 ordering gift that you get as a thank you. And I have been including a handmade card that I leave blank, a card in a custom envelope that I leave blank for your use. So double peppermints, a pack of embellishments, a $10 ordering gift, and a handmade card. And that is for folks who order the Premier Bundle between now and the end of Stampin' Up! Business on the 8th of May, which is a week from tomorrow. And, of course, you can't order it now, so what I meant is tomorrow when you can order it. Okay, so let's make a card, shall we? Since I knew I was going to spend a whole lot of time yucking about the bundles, because that's fun, I have gone ahead and pre-cut all of the things that we need, okay? So, let's get started. Just as a reminder, here is what we are making. Okay, and here's what you're going to need. You are going to need a couple of strips of um, one strip of Tranquil Tide cardstock. And I'm going to put all of the uh, card cuts on my website so you can see those if you like. And then you need one strip of the DSP, the Eastern Palace Specialty DSP. And you can see that I have made already a fresh fig cutout. And this is from this die with this die. And wait for it people wait for it this die so all I did was line those up just like that on my fresh fig cardstock and run it through the big shot and bada bing that's what it makes really quite cool then you're gonna need to make to cut out just this in gold foil for the backing let's put this out of my way and then one little die that I didn't show you in the die set is this, but it's, uh, you know, kind of straightforward. This makes this. Duh. And I've cut two because I'm pretty sure I'll screw up the sentiment, so I figured I would have a backup ready. Okay. Hey, Kathy. How are you? I'm glad to see you tonight. All right. And then we have two mats. Uh, these are four inches by five and a quarter inches each. And this is Tranquil Tide. And then we have regular weight, very vanilla cardstock for our card front and our inner liner. These are three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. Then I have a dapper denim uh, card base. It just it just tickles me no end that dapper denim is the is the coordinating color in this pack of paper. I love it. <clears throat> this is four and a quarter by eleven and scored and folded at five and a half inches. And this is a very vanilla medium envelope. Goofy. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and start. And the first thing that we're going to do is bannerize the ends of our paper here. And this is how you do this, in case you're interested and don't know. You just make a little snip in the center, and then you go from the corner to the center, and the corner to the center. And if it doesn't quite match up, you just kind of give it a cut. Do the other side, try to use about the same depth of your scissors, and it's eyeballed. This is art, not science, people. Don't need to be all head up 
No heading up. Don't get all head up, people. All right, and then we're gonna do that again with our, uh, my trimmer needs to be changed, obviously. Let me get my handy Tim Holtz sanding block to clean that up a little bit. And we'll try to make it about the same. The truth is, is this is a shorter piece of cardstock. And so, funny story, this was supposed to be a longer piece of cardstock, and I looked at five eighths and saw a quarter, and then I needed three. Well, just suffice it to say, I cut the piece too short. And then I decided I liked it like that. So, you know, sometimes that happens. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna put go ahead and get it onto a piece of our very vanilla cardstock. And I almost screwed it up. Did you see that right there, people? I almost screwed up. I was gonna put the DSP down first, and obviously a person should put the mat down first. So we're gonna put the mat down. And again, it's not rocket science. Then put some more liquid glue on the back of our DSP banner. And you can see it's just a smidge longer than the mat. And I actually kind of liked how that looked. And so, so I left it and I did not cut another mat <coughs> when I was making the first the first iteration there. Alright, so we'll set that aside for just a hot second. And now I'm going to attempt a feat worthy of a magician. I am going to attempt to get a slightly too big sentiment on a slightly too small die cut. And I'm going to try to do it in just one go. Everyone hold your breath. We're gonna stamp this. Hey Karen, thank you for joining. Hey Linda, your daughter is a higher priority every time. Thank you for joining us though. Okay, so I'm stamping this in dapper denim and my head's gonna get in the way a little bit. I apologize, actually I'm gonna pull this towards me a little. And I can't talk while I do that because if I do I'll screw it up. Good enough, close enough for government work, I say. I'm a government worker. Hey, Linda. Hey, Karen. And then I'm going to take, instead of having a mat, I just like to add a little something to the edges. So I'm taking my Tranquil Tide Stampin' Right marker. And I'm holding my tongue just right so I don't go all cattywampus on it. And I'm just barely edging the edge of my sentiment so that that's instead of a mat because I don't really need a mat but I like it to have a little definition to help it stand out a little bit otherwise sometimes I think it gets a little lost and if you don't agree with me then you can leave this part out but I like it while I'm doing this so today was um, Finn's second obedience class and today his sister came and that was terribly exciting and pretty distracting. It was hard, hard, hard to keep his attention on me when what he really wanted to do was go and jump on his sister and have a little play date. But he managed to overcome. It only took him about 10 minutes to settle back into being a good boy and he was a rock star and he is now exhausted and sleeping under the table because he's so tired. Okay, so that worked out pretty good. I'll take it for a dollar, Alex. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna build my little sentiment here. And I went straight with the gold mat and up and down with my fresh fig, but let me get my little extra pieces, my hanging chads, if you will. I'll get my ends turned up. before we get going any further. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of my liquid glue and I'm just putting it on this 
solid piece of the circle. Like so. And we'll go right there. I like using the glue because it gives you a second. There. Oh, ah! Tried to screw it up at the last second. See, never say, I like to use the glue because it lets me fix it. Because then you're sure as shooting going to have to fix it, huh? All right. So give a little rub around where I know I put glue. And let that set for half a second. And then I'm just going to take a Stampin' Dimensional and put it on the back of my little sentiment star thingy. Peel that off. And because it makes my hands get all weathered. Do I ever use the silicone mat when you're gluing? You know, I really don't. I just I just haven't done that. Um, I really only pull my scent my silicone mat out when I'm doing water coloring or something that's got a lot of water and it's messy. Or if I do the uh, the diaper wipe technique, sometimes I'll pull out my sentiment mat, or my sentiment mat. Apparently I have new lips today and they have not been broken in yet. No, my silicone mat. Okay, so just making this a little bit more uppity. Linda, use, you use yours all the time for gluing? Okay, and next up, you can see that I have uh, popped the whole thing over the top with some more Stampin' Dimensionals. So I'll do a little bit of a dry fit. You were just a lot neater. Oh, well, no, let's just go with Lucky. I'm lucky most of the time. All right, so that's how it's going to set. So I'm going to put my Stampin' Dimensionals on the back there. So when you use the silicone mat to glue, what do you do? You you put the glue on the silicone mat, and then you what? How do you how do you do that? I don't know how to do that. Somebody somebody educate me. Now you know what I realize my the error of my way is for once before I stuck something down that I didn't want. So I'm going to first put this on my mat before I get poofy stuff on there. Come here, you booger. Ah, apparently my check marking. There we go. All right. Gosh, I managed to get fast views every stinking where. All right, let's put this on one of our... Tranquil Tide mats. Like so. And then, then we'll put down our sentiment. There we go. And that is it for the card front. And my new quest for a clean and simple. So, on the inside, let me show you what we're aiming for. No, but when gluing intricate pieces seems less messy. Yeah, but how do you, oh, how do, but how do, what do you do? Do you just like, I don't know, I don't, mm, I guess I just don't understand, which is probably why I haven't done it, because I'm silly. Uh, thank you, Linda. Karen, your fast fuse is messed up. Huh? Fast fuse can be persnickety as all heck. Um, maybe try pulling it out and putting a refill in. Um, that that might work. All right, on the inside, you can see we have a sentiment, and then we're going to put some of these uh, little star images in fresh fig, and then some of these whirly gig things flourishes in tranquil tide all around. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right quick. And I've got a appropriately sized block. 
and somewhere in here I probably have a sentiment. There we go. Oh, I see, I see. So it's just it's just underneath so that you can clean up easier. I got it. All right. All right, so we're going to stamp this sentiment in DAPA denim to match the one on the front. Sometimes you sponge on the glue. Hmm, that's interesting. All right, hang tight, people. I'm going to be in the way so that I can get my sentiment where it belongs and straight down and up. The Eastern Palace Suite is beautiful. The Eastern Palace Suite is beautiful. The Eastern Palace Suite is beautiful. And a perfect. Perfect. It's perfect. All right. Now we'll add our little stars to the corners. Where's my little block? Here we go. Sometimes I help if, it, uh, if you sing it. I put Tombow on the mat. Take a sponge, twirl it around, and then sponge the glue on my intricate piece. Ah, that sounds like a good idea. I might have to try that. Might have to try that. Okay. Now, technically, I probably should put my squishy mat under here just to be sure I get a good, I get a good uh, image. And what I tried to do was stick a point in the corner, and then straight up and down. Yeah, the glue can really go everywhere. That is true, true, true. Which is why I I glue like this. If you've ever if you've ever watched, I have it up really close to me because you know I can't see it, and then I, I just barely get a little dab coming out, and I just tap it. So I just put little, little, little tiny drops on, with the idea that I can always add more. It makes a huge mess to take it away, though, right? Um, and it's really stout, so I just don't think you need a whole heck of a lot of it. Okay, there's that. Now in a in a fit of do not like lemon lime twist. You will, Julie. You will. You must come over to the lemon lime twist side. I'm going to be real efficient here, and I'm going to add my designs to my envelope while I have it out and inky. That never happens in real life, just so you know. I always get it all put away, clean my stamp, and then go, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to put that on the envelope, too. Okay. So that's that. And then we're going to put the little flirty loos. Oh, I don't know if that's the right name, but that's what we're going to put. The little flirty loos in Tranquil Tide. Let me shut that right quick. All right. Okay, now you can see this little flirty Lou has a big side and a little side, and so I attempted in my first card to keep the big side towards my star all the way around. We'll see if I succeed with that this time as well. And remember, don't get all rockified because you can see I've made a, a right mess of my stamp set. And in two seconds, after I, I'm going to risk it, people. I'm risking it. Here we go. This is the last one before I clean my stamp set. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to wipe off my block. That was close. That could have been real bad. Do you know how many envelopes I go through because I screw up a stamp? Good Lord, I could keep stamping up in envelope business all by my lonesome. All right, so now we're going to do the inside of the card. And I just twirl it around, trying to keep the large side towards the star. I don't know why, I just decided that's what it needed to be, and so that's what I'm doing. Thank you, Kathy. That's what's fun about this set is that you can just kind of keep adding little elements to it until it looks however however complex you like, but it's also nice for just simple things. 
I liked the contrast between the sort of busy inside and the very clean and simple front. There we go. One more. I only got to make one more go right. Yeah, smudging just really annoys me a lot. On the insides of the cards and on the fronts of the cards, if you smudge, sometimes you can get away with covering it with a pearl or some other kind of embellishment, but that doesn't really work all that well on the envelope, right? Okay, so I'm kind of air drying here because um, some of these inks are kind of like um, the basic black archival ink, which takes just a second to dry. And I'm not going to risk a smudge here at the last second. That should be good enough. Put some fast fuse on the back. Um, Y'all, my paper shares, I'll probably be announcing those on Tuesday or Wednesday of this week. So I hope you will join me and get you some ribbons and embellishments and papers. A little taste of everything. It's kind of like a test drive of the new consumables, papers and ribbons and embellishments in the new catalog. All right, so now we're gonna put this on the inside of our dapper denim card base. Oh, come here, come here, come to mama. All right. All right, there's that. And then I'm going to pop my card front on with some dimensionals. Now y'all do cut these, right? You know, you can cut these. They're just as dimensional as the middles, but it takes too long. It's a little too persnickety for me on a video, so they're just sitting over there. But use every single bit of your dimensional sheets. That was probably along the lines of, well, duh, Mary, what fool would not do that? You don't have to tell us that. You could even whine it, Mayor, God. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Robbie. Yeah, dimensionals are, uh, I go through them like Grant took Richmond. All right, here we go. Always make sure I'm right side up. Not to say that I've ever not been, <laughs> not. And there we go. All right. And there is our card one each card to send to a friend and to finish it up I'm going to fix the envelope flap pull out my paper here get the envelope flap prettied up with some liquid glue and a little more of yes we should try to buy stock in dimensionals we could we'll probably make a fortune cuz I think they're a pretty popular item if I had liquid glue and dimensionals. See, if you go to a desert island, you can't just have liquid glue. You'd have to have dimensionals, I think. I just, I just, a card without dimensionals to me is, well, pretty flat. <laughs> See what I did there? Yeah, okay, anyway. So, just put this up, line it up with the top of the envelope flat. Give it a little rub. Hey, thank you, Karen. I hope you will get it. It is it is beautiful. I I was kind of the same. I was like, well, you know. But boy, I sure I, it has really grown on me a lot. Really grown. Those dyes really make it for me, and the pretty fonts and the sentiments too. And there we go. One each card. Bing, bada, bang. Bada, boom. All right, like that. Oh, look, if I sent it just like that, somebody would get a Stampin' Dimensional cover. <laughs> All righty, folks, anybody got have any questions? So remember, there's two bundles available only for the month of May. 
It starts tomorrow morning. I would recommend getting on the online store as quick as you can in the morning. The starter kit, the starter bundle is going to be selling for $60.50 and the Premier bundle is going to sell for $103.50 and that will activate my ordering special for double peppermint points, a free pack of embellishments from the new catalog in addition to the normal free ordering gift and my handmade card that will come and I leave it blank. And don't forget that you get free gifts with both bundles from Stampin' Up! With the starter bundle you get the new Very Vanilla Note Cards and Envelopes and with the Premier Kit you get the uh, Note Cards and Envelopes and... You know what? I am wrong. I have totally told you this wrong, you guys. I am so sorry. You get, with the Premier Pack, you get a pack of Very Vanilla Medium Envelopes and a pack of the Very Vanilla Thick Cardstock. Okay, sorry, I, I messed that up. The Starter Bundle gets the new note cards in Very Vanilla, and the Premier Bundle gets the Medium Envelopes and the Thick Cardstock in Very Vanilla. Okay? All right. Let's see. Yeah, Kathy, it does. I usually end up, um, they're usually like an ounce and a half. So I usually put an extra 20 cents or so on, sometimes 10. Sometimes the trick is, though, that they're thicker than a quarter of an inch, and that is what drives the cost up m more than anything. Um, so, yeah, it is, but but for me, it's it's worth it, because I know when they open that envelope, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make them smile. And if I was better at making flat cards, <laughs> then then that's what I would do. All right, any other questions? Yes, the stickers are pretty, Linda. I like them quite a bit. Lots more than I thought I was going to. Julie, no paper, no tassels, no stickers. Sit. Mm -mm. I bet you didn't get any lemon lime twist ink, did you? Mm -mm. All right. Thank you, Kathy. That's very nice of you to say. Anything over an ounce is indeed extra postage. That is true. Also, a quarter of an inch thick once it's in the envelope. You, you need to kind of use your ruler and see how that looks. All right, y'all. If you don't have any other questions, I'm going to sign off. I do appreciate you joining me. I hope I'll see orders from you for the Premier Card, the Eastern Palace bundle in this next week. I'd like to give you some free stuff. Thanks, y'all. Bye.